Howdy folks, welcome back to Frontend Hero. In today's short video, we're going to be creating a primary navigation menu and making sure that users know there's a sub menu attached to a parent menu item by including drop down arrow indicators. The library we are going to be using is Font Awesome and we are using the free version 4.7. So let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is actually install the Font Awesome library if you haven't um, installed that already. I'm using Cloudverse CDN. Uh, once that's installed, let's create our primary navigation menu. So I'm going to give this an ID of, or a D, an ID of primary nav. Create a little unordered list here and some list items. So just by a basic um, primary navigation menu with the usual uh, suspects. So we got our home, we'll have uh, an about section, a news section and a contact section. Okay, so within <clears throat> um, about us, we're going to create our sub menu. So under the link, we're going to create a new menu and some new items. So we'll call this um, our team. Yeah, we'll leave it there. So let's have a look and see what this looks like um, at the moment. Okay, so our menu showing. Now we just need to give it a few little um, styles. So what we're going to do is create um, our target, the nav menu. And we're going to float it and give it a width of 100%. Now we're going to give it a border. of gray then we want to target the list item and we're going to remove any styles that may be associated with it so list style um, none and um, give it a border right value of um, our gray again and that's looking pretty good now we're going to target our um, hyperlink so we're going to um, make it a display block so it fills the um, the list item area um, going to give it a padding of 20 pixels and uh, make it a text decoration de uh, decoration of none so we don't have um, any underlines or anything like that to ruin the layout or ruin the style should I say um, and now we're going to give it a color of I think that's dark gray yeah okay so let's see what that looks like um, at the moment. Okay, cool. So we're just going to have to flow our items now in a second. So I'm going to target the very top level list items in our navigation menu. So what I'm going to do is target the direct um, selector of the nav, which is a UL, and then our LI. So this won't target any um, submenus or anything like that. So I'm going to float this left and make it inline. So let's see what that looks like now. Yeah, so obviously this guy here is our submenu, so we're going to have to hide that, but the menu looks fine. So if we go back in, um, just underneath our uh, direct descendant uh, selector, we're going to 
target um, the second unordered list. And we're going to just say display none. So if we have a look at that now, refresh. Yeah, looks fine. Um, this tutorial won't be dealing with any drop down menus or anything like that. It's just to show you how to um, create a, a font awesome arrow indicator beside each of these um, uh, menu items that has a sub menu. So now what we want to do is add in our arrows. So first things first, we're going to pop back in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is for each uh, parent item that has a child, I'm going to give it a class of hmm, has sub menu. So we can target this then. So we know if this parent item has a class of has sub menu, we can now target this guy here. So what I'm going to do is pop this guy in here first. Put the ally on that. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pseudo selector call after. So that means I'm not actually including any code or anything in the actual in the markup itself. I could add the font awesome icon in here, but or in here, but there's there's no point. We can do it a nice, easy, um, and a better uh, way here. So we're creating the um, the after selector here, and we're going to give it a position um, of right of about say twenty pixels. I think that's about right. Um, give it a top of 50%. So we want this to um, be centered in the list item. Um, then we're going to use a nice little trick here to center our, um, our, our pseudo selector. Uh, after um, translate, we're going to do minus 50 pixels. So between this guy here, top and transform minus, uh, translate minus 50%, this will um, make it centered, uh, make the arrow centered in the menu item. Uh, now we're going to give it a, let me see. We're gonna add in the actual, um, the icon. So we're gonna um, target the font family and add in font awesome. So we've included um, the Font Awesome library here. So now this should read this fine. So now we need to add in the icon as a content um, value. So if we go four point seven. So if we go to the old website, no, we do not want version five, um, and we're gonna search for our drop-down menu. So if I search for angle, angle down is what we want. You can use any um, icon you'd like, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be using uh, the Unicode value of um, this uh, icon here. So it's 4107, so grab that value there, pop back in, and add this in our content fields. Give it a font size of maybe 16 pixels. And let's see what that looks like at the moment. Yep. <laughs> I uh, seem to have forgotten something. So you need to um, escape it with this guy here, with the backslash. So now this should process. Okay, great. So now you'll see that it's actually not in the menu item at all. So we need to go back in and we're going to give this uh, pseudo selector, this after pseudo selector, a position value of absolute. And it's going to be positioned absolute inside the parent menu item that has the um, submenu class. So just for the sake of it, I'm um, just for the sake of like 
um, easiness, I'm going to add in, make every top menu item positioned um, relative. So now this uh, pseudo selector here is uh, positioned absolutely of this guy here. So if I have a look again and refresh the page, now we'll see it's nicely inside here. So now it's not looking 100% uh, correct. So let me figure out why. So if I scroll here, so we've got our after menu, it's positioned uh, relative, which is what we want. And now you'll see after this guy here, this is our selector. That's looking fine. Top 50%. Yes. But it's not what we want exactly. Let's see here now. Ah. No. Hmm. Okay, so it's position top 50%, yes. Um, and it's transformed um, 50, minus 50%. Oh, wait, no, that's, that should be right. Oh, it's sorry, <laughs> uh, translate Y. So in, we have an X axis and a Y axis. This is the axis we need to target, the Y axis. So let me pop back in here. and change this to not just translate everything, translate um, position Y. So if I save that again and have a quick peek, yeah, that's a lot better. So we just need to give the, um, the link some padding here. So we could give the, um, the list item some padding, but then it won't be uh, all selectable. So we're going to give the list item some padding here real quick. So if we pop into our link here, um, we're going to target um, links that are a child of the um, has hyphen submenu class. So give this a padding uh, right of say, I don't know, 35 pixels maybe. Let's see how that looks. A little bit better, it needs a bit more room, I think. So let's say 40 pixels. Okay, that looks pretty good. So yeah, um, that's basically it, but there's one small little thing we need to do. So you'll see if you hover over the, the link here, um, it's selectable, but if we hover over the actual icon, uh, we can, so a bit of a usability issue there. So if we pop back in um, to our editor and we target the um, the link, the direct uh, descender, um, descendant link of the has menu uh, list item, all we're going to do is give it a position of relative and bring it higher up in the stack. So give an index of one, give that a quick refresh. Now, if we hover it over, perfect. So the whole thing is selectable. So a nice and simple tutorial today. Um, hope you enjoyed. Any questions, uh, leave a comment and thanks for watching.